You suck. Person. I've been telling you all season, they've Philly. Shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan? <sighs> Kayla Carter. It's like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan? <sighs> Kayla Carter. It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style. I well, good morning, good people. Mark Holm here for the Cowboys Cowboy Show Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Show. Boo. With all you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that it's literally Wow. You know, they say misery loves company. And the Eagles are having a seat right beside us on the sofa that does at least help ease the pain a little bit that the Eagles got their lunch handed to them as well. Um, at least at least we can't get trolled by them. And I'm trying to figure out which is worse, us having that terrible game against the Green Bay Packers or the Eagles having the number one seed seemingly wrapped up and literally falling apart. Now, the one thing I will say about the Eagles situation, and before I do, let me say that Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, shout out to you, man. I, I, you know, you, I have to respect you, man. I have to respect you. You were an undersized center who played 12 years, 13 years in the NFL at an elite level. You were one hell of a player and wish you the best in retirement. And for the Eagles, they're going to be losing possibly Brandon Graham uh, and Fletcher Cox as well. Um, because of retirement. And that team, much like us, is currently headed for a lot of off-season changes. The question you have to ask is, will Nick Sirianni and Mike McCarthy be fired? And who will be fired first? If I were a betting man, I'd say Nick Sirianni would get fired before um, Mike McCarthy from the simple fact that the thing with the Joneses, you know, I always think about one of my high school coaches and playing football. Excuse my language, but this is where we are with the Cowboys. But he would say, if you're going to F up, F up at full speed. There's nothing worse than messing up or effing up and doing it slow. You're going to mess up. Mess up full speed. And right now, you have to say that everything needs to be on the table for the Cowboys everything because the shit we've been doing for all these years has not worked and what my focus plans to be in upcoming videos and segments will be figuring out we fix the boys it's bottom line i don't know about you but i'm sick and tired of every year being good but not good enough that's where we are we're always a team that's going to compete, and I can sit here and say because the Giants are rebuilding, Washington is rebuilding, the Eagles look like they're going to be rebuilding, that more than likely we're going to still win a lot of games next year. Just are. But winning a lot of games can't be the focus any longer. We can't look and say 36 wins right now is the thing to do. Thirty. I'm sorry, 30. 36 wins in the last three years. In the end, it's still a failure. It's still a failure. It's a failure when you can't get past the wild card round. My buddy Wade, his solution, and you know, we, we need to go through with all the possibilities. And let me read his 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 suggestion. Mark, you said you want a solution for replacing Dak. You already know the solution, Mark. You've been watching football for decades. The solution is for us to draft, Mark. The Cowboys drafted Don Meredith, drafted Staubach, drafted Troy Aikman, drafted Dak. It's a dice roll, Mark. That's the answer, Mark, even if you don't want to hear it. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But see, here's my... My thoughts on the problem for the Cowboys. Um, 
let me pull this up because as I watch even, you know, the Eagles, which were in the Super Bowl last year, and seeing them going out there and constantly trying to get better. As I look at the San Francisco 49ers and look at the roster that they had before they decided, let's go get Hargrave, before they decided to get Christian McCaffrey, before they decided to get Chase Young, before they decided to go out and get Randy Gregory, they were already a really good team. And they constantly look for more to try and get better. They don't, they're, they're never satisfied with the status quo and thinking, we have enough. And see, this is the problem for the Cowboys, is this flawed philosophy of Stephen Jones. We believe in our guys. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. We believe in our guys, but our guys aren't enough. You can't go through and think that we can just convert safeties to be linebackers and fit every need. We can't do that. We can't look and say, we're going to get rid of a bruising between the tackles back and take a scat back and say, that's going to be our running back. We can't continue to sign big contracts to guys that are injured coming off of it because I can't honestly look and say every time we have done a big contract with somebody, we know that they're not going to play well that season. Hear me out. D-Law, when they finally decided to do the contract with them, they had pissed the guy off so much that he said, I'm not going to get my shoulder surgery done until I get my contract to get leverage. And what happened? He waited until May. He was not ready to start the season, and that season was lost. You decided to get rid of Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson and re-sign Michael Gallup to a big-ass contract to a guy coming back from an ACL. And as much as I love Michael Gallup, it was wrong. You ended up paying Jalen Smith to be your linebacker, knowing that he had dropped foot and ended up eating his contract for a couple of years. And then this offseason, you said, let's go ahead and get Terrence Steele's deal done and lock him up. And this season wasn't anywhere near what he had done before the injury. See, this is the problem. And the thing is, is I don't have a problem per se saying maybe we can lock those guys up. But you better have a plan in place to make up for them until they're ready. Because we always say we believe in our guys that aren't proven. Now, as I listed the people that San Francisco went to put on their team. This is the notable free agents that the Cowboys signed from 2016 to 2021. Alfred Morse, Benson Moya, Nolan Cara, Carroll, Stephen Pia, Kona Ely, Cedric Thornton. Going down the list even further, George Ioka, Randall Cobb, Kerry Hyder, Trayvon Austin, Jamel Alawulis, Jonathan Cooper. Going down even further, Emerson Griffin, Andy Dalton, Daryl Worley, Alden Smith. Don Terry Poe, Clinton Ha Ha Dix, and finally, at least some that, that gave us a little something. J. Ron Curse, that was a good one. Demontre Kaziz, Malik Hooker, has been good for us. Brent Urban, Carlos Watkins, Keanu O'Neill, whoa, dude, and Terrell Basham. That's it. That's the list. 
And my thing would be on this to, to answer your question, Wade. I'm not saying that if you were to draft a quarterback, you know, and get them for five years and have a cheap salary, it's not a bad idea if you can hit on them. But here's the problem for the Cowboys. When you think about quarterbacks, with the exception of Troy Aikman, the guys that they wanted, like Johnny Manziel or Connor Cook or um, Lynch, you can't look at this and say they've got a great track record at getting a guy. And unfortunately, we're in the 20s right now. So the problem will be is where are we getting the draft capital to move up the up in the first round to get something that would be closer to maybe a guarantee? See, the problem is for the Cowboys, like I said, we're good enough to compete against the mediocre teams and the lesser teams. But when it comes to playoff football, there, to me, in my mind, was a tragic flaw of our defense being this aggressive, get after the quarterback, play with the lead type defense. Unfortunately, playoffs are a different animal, and you've got to be able to stop the run. And they tried, they tried with Mozzie Smith, and that didn't work this year. Hankins was a legitimate defensive one technique guy. But when you look across the board at our defensive linemen, you look at our edge rushers, you don't have a lot of 300-pounders that can hold the line. Micah is incredible. But Micah at about 250 pounds, you get big man running at him, it's hard for him to hold the line. He can chase you down from the backside. But that lies the problem. And then when you don't have linebackers, when you had opportunities of set of getting Anthony Bars a guy who's coming back from an ACL injury. When you literally could have signed a Bobby Wagner, because this is the flaw. The Cowboys say, we're not going to pay a lot for a free agent. We don't want to spend money on Bobby Wagner, a guy who's healthy, who doesn't miss games, who has proven. We'd rather go ahead and sign a veteran minimum for an Anthony Barr. Now, that's not to say that the Cowboys haven't gotten the most out of them. But you look at the Cowboys when they do make moves for named players. Emerson Griffin. Dude was crazy in tail end of his career. Um, you think about getting Brandon Cooks. Maybe if you got Brandon Cooks two, three years ago, a couple thousand yard seasons before. Or Stephon Gilmore three years ago. When they're in their prime as opposed to going downhill. We keep getting old guys that are average that are looking for a payday. And that's the flaw with the Cowboys. You can look and say, it's just Dak. Well, Dak was part of the problem. We got 100 problems. Dak's one of them. But we have to address all of them. And the problem is, is... If you take, at least in my mind, if you take the draft capital it's going to take to get another quarterback and plug him into the same situation you have now with a defense that can't stop the run and without a running game, you're sitting here for the same Groundhog Day, the same rinse, wash, rinse, repeat. We just are. Now, the thing, other thing that I have a problem with, and I go back to, Will they fire Nick Sirianni? They won't wait. The Cowboys keep effing up at slow speed. They waited and waited and waited to get rid of Mike McCarthy, excuse me, Jason Garrett, that the quality candidates that you may want to target are already gone. So if you're going to fire Mike McCarthy, Jerry, Fire the man and get it over with and start the process right now. You already know Bill Belichick is interviewing with Atlanta. We hear that Harbaugh is interviewing with the Chargers, right? We know Dan Quinn is going to the Commanders, the Panthers. Um, we believe Seattle will make an appointment. 
um, Tennessee, and so on. If you're looking at Vrabel, do something now to get it going. Get them in as soon as possible so they can start doing what they want to do. And the final thing, again, where the Cowboys keep effing up at slow speed, if you're going to get players, get them as soon as possible to get them in the fold to understand in OTAs what you're doing. Don't wait till training camp. You don't have enough time for them to learn the system. These are all problems where we're good enough to compete, but not good enough to win it all. And that has to change. Now, like I said, watching the Eagles last night did at least make me feel a little bit better. I'm happy that they're joining us on the couch. And I will say that Philly 500's um, trolling of me didn't age very well. Let's just listen in here to Seth Joyner. I got fooled as well, Mike. I really did. I really thought that this team would come out and find a way to be inspired against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team in a situational game like this. Um, I, I'm shocked, but then there's a side of me that's not shocked. And um, I think that this is a total rebuild from top to bottom. Um, it all, it all, it, Nick Sirianni has continued to say that my fingerprints are on everything on this roster. If that's the case, then he has to go. And you guys know for the last couple of weeks, I've stated again and again and again and again that I am not one to ever advocate for someone's loss of job. But the fact that he's lost this team and people can, in the locker room can say whatever they want to say about, oh, we're playing for Nick, we believe in Nick, we got Nick's back, that's a bunch of BS. Because as players, you don't go out on the field and put that product on the field mm. if, you really, if you really believe in your coach and his staff, okay? Wow. That's pretty deep. So the thing at least I can say about the Eagles, they fuck up. But at least they do it at full speed. Jerry, we're waiting on you. We know that you're not talking on 105.3 The Fan. Um, we know we have not seen Mike McCarthy uh, speak. We've heard that you've hopped out on your jet. You know, I'm leaving on the jet plane. Um, we don't know if you're going just to get away, like a Southwest commercial, or if you're talking to somebody. You need to go ahead and do something. Cowboys Nation, we love you. We love the Cowboys. We all in with you, but you got to do better than this. We deserve better than this. And this is a travesty of what has happened with this team and the bullshit that we have to put up with. It's time to finish that walk of shame and listen in to what they have to say, at least. Uh, well, no, actually, it's not a walk, a walk of shame for them Eagles. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about the guys. Um, Again, there's a lot of guys in that locker room, all the guys in that locker room, every single one of them that put their heart and soul into this. Um, I'm not worried about me. If you want Nick back. If you want Nick back. I didn't know he was going anywhere. All right, so that's mm. an excellent way not to answer a question you don't want to answer. I'll get to the Jason mm. Kelsey uh, note that I alluded to a, a moment, in, a, in a couple of minutes here, but let's start with that. So you hear Nick Sirianni say he's not thinking about his job. What do yeah. you say? Yeah, of course he's thinking about it because, look, there's going to be a whole lot of things that are going to be reevaluated right now. Yeah. And starting procedurally with, what, look, number one, if you bring Nick Sirianni back, what do you have to do as far as the coaching staff is concerned to make some changes in order for this to get back on the right track? You made changes in the middle of the season when you took Sean Desai out of there and you put Matt Patricia in there. You know, there's a lot of talk coming out of there about whether or not Sean Desai could have maybe, you know, made some changes as far as some of the assistants that he, was, that he wanted mm -hmm. to bring in there and he wasn't allowed to bring in there. Then when you look at the football team itself, Look, the team is devoid of talent at the second level and at the third level at the safety position. Everybody attacks this team in the same way. Every single person. And so now you have to figure out whether or not philosophically you have the right outlook as far as how it, what it takes to play top-level pass defense. Mm. And then lastly, when you get back to, to Sirianni, 
Is he really the guy that you want leading the charge going down the stretch here in terms of like a couple of years from now? Or is Bill Belichick in play? Mm. Is that the kind of guy who needs to be in play here? Because personally, I think it's something that you definitely have to consider. All right, let me check a few things off here. I was going to get to Belichick. <laughs> my okay. Since we're there, let's go. So, Nick Sirianni, look, yeah. he was in the Super Bowl 11 months ago. But this is an organization that has been known to move on when they think it's the time. Is it time? I, mean, I think it's going to be time. I think when you saw Larry in the, in the box last night, the facial expressions like, that was real, right? Lewis yeah. said it when we were in our meeting this morning. Like, it doesn't get more personal for those guys. And here's the issue. Like, everybody, you know, everybody talks about the Dallas debacle, all that kind of stuff. This <laughs> team, That's the this team there, yeah. fell off a cliff from 10-1 and one till to, to, to the, the six or seven weeks in a row that you played that poorly. Look, I, I thought that Tampa had a chance. I didn't think Tampa would boat race them. If Tampa catches the ball, they may score 50 points mm -hmm. on this football team. And you cannot give up points. And then from an offensive standpoint, totally bailed away from what they talked about doing all week. Yep. We're going to be physical. We're going to do this kind of thing. We give the ball to Swift. None. We don't depend on the offensive line. We let Hurts in, this, in, the, in, the, in the receiving core try to win it, which obviously isn't going to happen against Tampa. This was just an ugly Ugly. It, 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 the whole situation has it's fallen apart. Ugly. And so I think that's the indictment when you're talking about this. Yeah, nobody's off the hook, though. I think we celebrated what Howie Roseman built last year. We have to appreciate that they had nothing, as you mentioned, on the second level and the third level on defense. Missing tackles is inexcusable. Yep. But also, they didn't have the talent. They yep. start, they're searching for safeties midseason. They're yep. searching for linebackers midseason. The offense is a little different. The offense had the talent, but mm -hmm. they could not consistently have an answer for the blitz. They had and no I watched that game last night and I watched the game and I thought damn they still don't have an answer for the blitz I rewatch it they have answers for the blitz but they aren't killing people they're like small as with the exception of that big play down the middle of the field uh, yeah. to Smith that was the only time when they made them pay for blitzing so keep blitzing them yeah. they, they overload the box they only have three DBs out there because they put extra linemen out there to stop the run and then their answer is we have you compromised we have you out there with only three DBs mm -hmm. and their answer for that is short passes screens and stuff they just seem yeah. to be listless from top yeah, to bottom. It's, it's kind of weird what you just brought, brought up. The fact that, look, this is one of the best offensive lines in football. This yeah. is a team that, from an identity mm -hmm. standpoint, wants to mash you in the mouth. They want to absolutely beat you up and bully you, yet they wouldn't they do it last night. They, they got scared over the fact that Todd Bowles made some adjustments, brought some bigger people in yep. when they thought first and second down base runs were going to be with um, – that they thought that that's what Philadelphia was going to get and they were going to try and take it away. And I asked you on the way in here, just because a team says they're going to try and take it away, does that always discourage you Absolutely from actually not. just stopping running the football? Of course not. No. Especially not when you have a top two, top three offensive line. So they misused the people that they had on offense and defensively, they misevaluated the people that they had on that side of the football yeah. and tried to blame it on a defensive coordinator who didn't have his people in there in the first place and then said, hey, look, Matt Patricia, you take over, and it looked the same way. Yeah, yeah. So quite honestly, you've got a bunch of different things you have to address on different levels here. Yeah. And really, if you want to talk about people who want, wanting to be held accountable, it starts at the very top and just work your way on down. Yeah. Just keep on working your way down because when you have a collapse like this, it's always multi-layered. Absolutely. I know people want to go, Sean Desai, it's you. Brian Johnson, it's you. Nah. Jalen Hurts, it may be you. You know football doesn't work like that. It's always a colossal especially kind not, of group effort. Especially not when it looks like this over the course That's of right. a month. That's a, right. A, a That's couple right. months. Too That's much. when it's like that. You go even higher. Sirianni, yeah. you're included. You know, when they Harry ask, Roseman, yeah. when they ask get the your ass out here too. Everybody got to get something. When they ask the players, they ask Jalen Hurts, well, how do you fix this? He's like, well, don't you think we would have fixed it if we knew how? <laughs> right. You know why you can't fix it? Because it's too multi-layered. Yes. Because you can't fix all those things. You can't draft people in the middle of the season. Right. What are you going to do? You're going to go out and find a coach who all of a sudden, like, magically is going to have every answer? That, no, you've got to do that in offseason. There's a lot of things to work on here. I hear what you're things. saying. But let me ask a question on behalf of every football fan who is watching this and listening to this and saying, wait a minute. I was led to believe 11 months ago this was the most talented roster or among them go. in the NFL that drafted well again, including having Jalen Carter fall right to them. I was led to believe oh, before this season began they might be the most talented roster in the NFL. Now you're telling me they don't have answers because their roster is so bereft of talent. How did uh, that no, happen? No. I'll uh, look, they, I believe they have answers on the offensive side of the ball. Absolutely. Yeah. They just don't always go to them. They just don't always call on them. They don't really have the same identity this year as a year ago. So then, so then you start thinking, okay, the loss of Shane Steichen is big. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Brian Johnson, we had a lot of hopes, but it just seemed like it was a situation that he couldn't really handle. On the defensive side, on the, on the front level, look, on the defensive line, I still think they are better than what they showed in terms yeah. of rushing the passer. Second and third level, but we talked about that is a problem. 
That was a problem going into the season. I think they skipped leg day on the defense side. Of the ball. <laughs> That's what it boils down day. to is they skipped leg day. They look great up top. Yeah. Swole, great pecs, nice abs, bods and tries, but they skipped leg day. Yes. And so if you don't, it's important to be strong at one point, but their 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 roster is not well constructed They're not on well the defensive side of the ball. I think it's it's beautiful in offense. They got every tool that they need. Right, the fact I'm that a, they didn't I'm execute there is a different and, and answer. Right here. We've had enough misery for the day. All I ask, Jerry, is speed some shit up, man. Stop taking your damn time. If you're going to fire the man, go ahead and fire the man. And find somebody for real. Because the problems, and, and you know, I've already gone too long with this video, but I, I'm just sitting here looking at, at Twitter, and I, you can just see the problems here. Start from Jerry on down. And shit has to change. If it doesn't, you're not going to attract one of those top-tier coaches. That You're not going to get a Bill Belichick in here. You're not going to get a Harbaugh in here. You're not going to get these guys that want to go ahead and win because I don't know that winning is the ultimate thing. I think it's almost more of how can we go ahead and spread ourselves even further and get into everything. Jerry Jones, your business is a Cowboys and real estate and Vegas and New York. You're all over the place, which is fine. And if you're going to do that, then get people in here to run this business because you're running this one in the ground. All right, good people. You know, I love the Cowboys and I love you guys, but this shit just hurts. I'm sick of it. I just am. 